What up, it's Melvin7 here and today I'm bringing you a very different style of video It's basically the problem with FIFA 21 and to be honest any FIFA and throughout the course of the years that kind of thing um, This is the kind of thing just to have in the background like you know the, the I will be going through things uh, showing you on screen of course but I mean if you've played FIFA <laughs> for you know even a fraction of the time i've played you'll understand what i'm on about anyway it's more a talk pretty much i'm not trying to rant or anything like that but it's just things need to be said to be honest and i know they've been said by other people like nepenthes i know uh, pogba senior tweeted on uh, twitter yesterday um basically you know everything he, he said was correct that he you know released something really really fun right at the start with the gameplay and then they update it with a patch and it seems in order to for the next fifa to say oh we've improved the gameplay um because you know it's so bad from the previous one but yeah it, it makes a lot of sense the thread that he had on twitter but no i want to go in depth on everything pretty much and just why this game isn't fun to play it really isn't anymore it's not about fun ea have either forgot or they just do not care about fun all it's driven is to to make it a chore FIFA isn't fun anymore, it's a chore if you play Ultimate Team. Uh, particularly if you play Ultimate Team to upgrade your team, to get the best possible things, it's a chore now and it, it, it genuinely isn't fun. And a game shouldn't be like that. The game's primary focus should be for it to be fun. Yes, of course, the business, the organisation, the corporation will want to make money. At the end of the day, that's what they've done it for. Like, they're not doing it out of the goodness of their hearts. They're doing it for the paycheck, which is absolutely fine. It's just other games are fun and, you know, they seem to care about being fun. Now, you know, you might be sitting there thinking, this game is fun. I love it. And I love FIFA as well. I really do. This is why I've played almost 400, no, over 400 games already. And that doesn't even include friendlies. Like, if we go on to my friendly record... Um, I, I've played a lot more than that. Um, I'm not actually sure how the hell to... Oh, there we go. View detailed stats. So there you go. I was going to say that can't be the games. Um, where is the total games? Am I just being silly here? Um, I don't know where the hell you find your, your statistics. But regardless, I've played over 100 games of friendlies. Easy. Um, but anyhow, right. On to the, the points. Uh, basically... Right, I, w I was sat here on Sunday, you know, Cold War had just came out on Friday or Saturday, whenever it was, and you know, I was playing that, I was enjoying that, and then my, my weekend league, I want to play, of course, because you get, you get rewards on Thursday, so I had 29 games to play on Sunday, and yes, that's my own fault, whatever, but... I hated playing them, I really did, and you know, I, I was getting frustrated, I kept backing out, and I ended up finishing in uh, Silver 1. Uh, I literally got 13 wins this week, I lost 4-3 right at the end, and um, yeah, it just, uh, I backed out of 8 games, it was just toxic, it was horrible, and it, it literally was a chore for me to play. Now of course, I don't have to play foot champs, but the problem is, the fear of missing out, like I, I didn't plan to play much rivals this week either, and the fact is, if I didn't play, I wouldn't be getting rewards on Thursday, which wouldn't benefit me for other SBCs and everything. And that's not the way it should be. And again, it's down to me to play that. That's fair enough. I didn't have to. I could have just played on COD. I would have enjoyed that more. Um, but yeah, for, for video purposes and just... Because I like opening rewards. That That's the whole point. Like, champs, despite what everyone says, it is clearly the best rewards for your time i know you can make more coins from trading and that sort of thing but if you want to play the game it's the best thing unless you get lucky in draft and you know you pull a 100k pack and you get something out of that champs offers you the best because you also get rivals rewards and stuff like that but of course ea decided to change rivals rewards so you can only theoretically play uh, get to rank two or three unless you play loads of games on thursday or friday and saturday and then you play your foot champs games after that because of course you get 400 for a win loss or a draw it's absolutely absurd and um also what that does is it pushes people to not forfeit and this is what's really annoying with the game because everyone knows it's 15 to 20 minutes per game on fifa but the benefit of playing online is if you're absolutely battering someone the idea or this is what i personally think anyway you know it, it's nice when they back out and they give you an early game so then you can move on to the next one now 
what EA have done is done everything they can on every single game mode to ensure that you do not back out and you play the entirety of the game. Of course, you've got your, your coin modifier, which has meant less and less every single FIFA because it's just so easy to make coins. So with this, you get 400 points. And because most people on a Thursday are at work or they're at school, they don't have a lot of time, they might you know get through five, 10 rivals games. Other than that, the first 20 games on foot champs, they don't want to back out because, as you can see, I'm ranked three there. I, I backed out so many that I've only got 8,000 points. Um, what's rank one this week? So rank one is 12,640. If you play every single foot champs game, you get 12,000 points. Doesn't matter if you win, lose, draw, doesn't matter how many goals you score, you get 12,000, which isn't enough for rank one. I'm in division four. I was in Division 2 and I've relegated myself. I'll explain why in a bit. That's uh, another point that I've got on the game. But yeah, 12,640. So you would have had to play some Rivals games. And because of that, because Rank 2 is almost that, you know, it, it's 9,800. People don't want to sacrifice their 400 points. So they're going to stay in. Even if you're winning 7-0, people will likely stay in because they want those 400 points. And you know this. That's exactly why they've done a 400 point system where it doesn't matter if you win, lose or draw, you get the exact same because they want people to play. They want people on the game because it, it shows good metrics and stuff for their, their stakeholders, their business partners, all of this. They can say, these people are, are playing the game, they're loving the game, they're, they've spent this amount of time. YouTube changed its entire algorithm a through, few years ago to not for view base, same with EA, it'll be similar. Player base, doesn't really matter. It's how long people are on the game because they don't want you to be on another competitor's game. They don't want you, uh, you to be on Fall Guys, on Among Us, on COD, on Fortnite, whatever else out there. They want you on FIFA because if you're on FIFA, you're not playing any of these other games, you're not spending money, and you're not earning the other companies their, their share pretty much. So it, it's all about playtime, which is why they've done everything in their power to ensure that people don't rage quit. And this point is proved by the worst thing they've done this game. Okay, friendlies, I love it. I love the concept. I love the idea of uh, being able to earn objectives, to earn players in a game mode that isn't toxic, or at least it wasn't in previous FIFAs. Now they're doing everything they can to make it exactly like rivals and champs. The only benefit it has at the minute is that you know, it doesn't matter. You're not playing for a weekly reward, so people aren't as sweaty. But to counteract that with this objective, uh, the road to the final knockout stage, you now only have a potential of 12 games. You can only play 12 games, and you need to get six wins. So what this is going to spark, you know, if you've played any of these um, objective players, I'm going to get this Corey 8, that's the only one I haven't done yet, but if you've done any of the other ones that they've put on friendlies, you'll know that if you, most of the time, if you go 2-0 up, sometimes it's 1-0, but mostly 2-0 up, the opponent will rage quit because they just want to get their games out really quick, get it as quickly as possible. But now, even if you go 2-0 behind, people aren't going to rage quit because you know, you've got a limited amount of games, so you want to try and do everything you can to get back into the game to uh, get the win, essentially. So they're not going to back out unless you're getting tranched 5-0 or something like that. Then people might start to back out, but you've only got a limited quantity of games. So you're going to want to do everything you want you can to get those six wins in the 12 that they give you available. And that's just not right, especially on a friendly game mode, complete in the road to the final knockout stage, live foot friendly and earn untradeable rewards. Um, wait there, there's, there's a part where it says fun. Uh, I think it might be on the actual uh, thing. But yeah, it's disgusting. It really is. Because friendlies is supposed to be the, the mode where you can just chill out. You can earn good rewards and you don't have to sweat it out because you get enough of that on rivals, on champions, uh, foot champs, where every win matters pretty much or every point matters for rivals because you get weekly rewards. And everyone's always going to do everything they can. Like It's driven for the rewards, for the success, which is fair enough. But this one didn't. But there you go. Can you come out on top against the competition? Max attempts, 12. It's just, it's ridiculous. And that's on top of making friendlies, skill-based matchmaking. Remember, if you know, you've played FIFA's throughout the year, I've played FIFA the Ultimate Team since FIFA 11. That was my first Ultimate Team. I played FIFA 10 after that uh, just to experience it, but my first ever 
uh, Ultimate Team that I played was 11. And, you know, up until about, I think it's 16, where things started to change. Before then, no such thing as skill-based ma skill matchmaking. You could get... Ma there wasn't even divisions back then. You could literally just match anybody. Anybody who had a stable connection or was near you or had the same server, that kind of thing, um, you could match. And that was brilliant because some games you get absolutely smashed. Other games, you know, you, you find piss easy. It's... It's the randomness that gives the fun because you know, uh, sorry, the, the difference now, you know when you go into a game, you're going to be matched against someone who's so similar to your skill level that most things are going to be 50-50. Of course, there's going to be anomalies where that opponent's playing bad, you're playing bad, so you're going to get an easy win like a 4-5-0. But most of the time, it's literally marginal. For me, every FIFA since they've done this, I've had like a 50-50 win-loss ratio because I'm bang average on FIFA and I... I match up against people who are exactly like I am and every mistake counts. So if opponent makes a mistake and I score, it's usually like the, the, the very, very... What I'm trying to say, it's literally on a thread. It's a 50-50 game and it, it's one shitty decision or little bullshit error in the game and then you end up losing. And it, it shouldn't be like that. It should just be random, particularly for this game mode. If you're not going to do that on Rivals and you're not going to do that on Champs, friendlies should be it, it's in the name friendlies you're not supposed to sweat it out and hate it and they're doing everything they can to make this game mode exactly like champs which means there is no casual game mode there, there's nothing where you can just sit back and relax yes in friendlies you can have different teams because of the objectives that you're working towards you know will force you to use certain stipulations and i don't mind that i find that fun I like the fact that there's silver stars and you can build a silver squad that you can use every week. I like the fact that there's stipulations like that MLS one where or the League One uh, Molly where you could only have 77 overall team and you can only have three max silvers. I love that because it gives you the chance to use players like Gelson Martins or Renato Sanchez. Uh, to be fair, people use him anyway, but you know what I mean? These players that you might not have liked prior. Uh, there was an inform that my mate was using in League One, and he absolutely loved using him for the objective. But now, because it's so driven to be skill-based matchmaking and to be winning, like you've got limited quantities now. This is this is going to be a, a recurring theme now. There's no way they're just going to do this one. It doesn't matter what the community thinks and what the backlash is as of this. And of course, Nepenthes tweeted about it, and yes, I agree. We are part of the problem because we'll still do this. But at the end of the day. What else can you do if you enjoy FIFA and you enjoy working for rewards? You're going to do this, and it shouldn't be down to the player to have to say no. I don't want to do that because it's a game. It's supposed to be fun, and yeah, I mean they're killing everything that everyone enjoys. They do not want you to spend time in the menus either. They prefer you playing games so then they can say, oh, billions of games have been played. I know I was on about um, the time spent on the game, and that's wonderful, of course it is, but if they look and, you know, there's two trillion games have been played um, compared to last year where there was 10 trillion games, um, but there's more time spent on the game, but it's the menus, I don't think I'm putting this uh, across very well, but basically it's easier for them on their statistics to show how many games have been played rather than game time spent on, because you could just be idle in the menus of course, like you, you're not necessarily doing objectives, SBCs, that sort of thing. You're idle. But this, this is the thing. They've, they've started, well, a few years ago now, killing off menu grinders. And, you know, that started this, this year, well, last year actually, more so with untradable rewards, making everything untradable as much as they can. Like, uh, there's only a handful of things that are tradable, like these overpriced SBCs, which I'll get to as well with the player SBCs. Um, but yeah, I mean, player rewards being untradable is absolutely fine, but there you go. The, the UEFA Champions League, an untradable 50k pack, and this is a league SBC. People loved league SBCs. I loved league SBCs because it was something where you could just keep grinding. You could get a consistent level of packs for when new promos came out and you could open them and test your luck. Because at the end of the day, that's one thing I love about FIFA and that uh, Ultimate Team in particular. And that's what most people love is the randomness and opening packs. Like when I was a kid, I used to have match attacks and that kind of thing and Yu-Gi-Oh cards and stuff. And I used to love just randomly seeing, oh, this card, oh my God, it's unbelievable. It's the same kind of concept on FIFA. Everyone loves when you pack an icon or an Mbappe. 
it, it's it's that sort of thing that gives you enjoyment but now if you pack that and it's untradeable for example if you got an icon and it's an untradeable one and you get someone like Nakata or uh, uh, Carlos Puyol they're just unusable and that's another point I'll get to as well um, where it's a little bit harder to blame EA really for that but again it, it's a point that makes this game not so fun um, but yeah the, the untradeable rewards that they're pushing now um, I mean I have a, a series called Dub and L if you, you know, you're not uh, familiar with the channel where I review 6pm content and I say whether it's good whether it's bad so Dub L um, and yeah, I mean, there, there was an SBC that probably will still be on the live things. I'll have done it for an untradeable 50k pack. No, it's, it's expired now. Untradeable 50k pack. And I call that a big dub. And the reason for that is because it's so rare for us to get tradable stuff. And it was a cheap thing. But in reality, we shouldn't be getting untradable stuff for this. Like an untradable 25k pack. I haven't even looked at this SBC because I haven't been on FIFA in a couple of days. And yeah, I mean... The stipulations are alright, but it should be tradable, so you can earn coins and buy players and that kind of thing. Another thing, player SBCs have been getting more expensive by the day. This human song is disgusting. It really is. He's a brilliant card, of course he is, but it's it's like an inform upgrade, and you're spending four, maybe five times the amount of the base song for this card for an untradeable thing that's going to be obsolete in three weeks because son will get a hat trick and he'll get another in form he might even get another player of the month it, it's just it's not going to be on above the curve for very long in terms of player quality yes there's some tradable packs here but i mean even <laughs> the 88 rated squad that you've got to put in which is probably around 200k is an untradable 45k pack that gives you six rare players the other packs are absolutely shite as well in terms of what you you're putting in i remember back in fifa 17 or fifa 18 there was a player of the month zlatan ibrahimovic one of the stipulations was to give in uh, ibrahimovic so of course his price rose etc but once you did that you got a tradable 100k pack guess what i got from that tradable 100k pack i got team of the year sergio ramos i ended up making profit because of this the packs were unreal there like that that was an ibrahimovic there was another one for like uh, it used to be a i think it was an 87 88 or an 89 used to guarantee you at least a 50k 100k or 125k pack that was tradable now you're looking at an untradable 45k pack for an 88 rated squad an untradable 30k pack for an 87 rated squad sorry that's tradable but again it's six rares six silvers um six gold Sorry, it's all rare, six silver, six gold. You knew what I meant, rare electron players pack. But anyhow, 30k pack as opposed to 100k pack back in the day. They're scaling back everything they do, even with League SBCs. When they first came out, I remember, I can't remember if it was FIFA 18 or 19 when they first introduced League SBCs, but you, you got the Premier League one, and my days, some of the, the packs you could get there, all of them were tradable. You could get a 50k pack for completing Man United, a 55k pack for completing Man City, 25k pack for completing Newcastle, that kind of thing. And now you look at the uh, the Libertadores thing, and it's small prime silvers, Electrum players pack, which is one rare player, um, the gold players pack, untradable, which is one rare player and 12 golds. They're just crucifying everything that makes this enjoyable. So guess what? People don't do these as much anymore, which is exactly what they want. They want you playing the game, the actual game. And because all the game modes are just so stressful, FIFA shouldn't be stressful. It should be fun. And it, it's an absolute joke. But yeah, they want you to be doing that. And yeah, you can play draft. Of course you can, but it's four games. You get your rewards, etc. But they haven't touched draft in six years. The rewards are exactly the same as they've ever been it's absolutely absurd the the level of um stuff they haven't done for draft um you know they, they do content uh, updates every now and then that'll be set on an auto timer to change the icons that you can get or add the special cards in that kind of thing but ultimately draft is exactly the same as when it was introduced in fifa 16 i think is when draft was there so we're talking six fifas where the rewards are practically the same the servers will be closed now for fifa 16 but if you look on people's videos of winning draft back in fifa 16 the rewards will be the exact same as they are now 
Um, I think the only potential difference is that coins can potentially be get, uh, getting in there, but I mean, that's so rare. I mean, I think I've seen one video where someone's got 45k coins, 100k pack and a 35k pack. So yeah, I mean, draft is the only potential casual game mode, but even that feels like skill-based matchmaking. Um, I, I don't know, that might just be me who thinks that. Uh, I'm shit at draft, I always have been. Like, you can see, eight, eight wins, nine losses. I, I haven't won anything on it. Uh, my goal difference is terrible. I'm just not very good at it, but it does feel like it's skill-based matchmaking because, it. I mean, look at the stats compared to friendlies. The goal difference is minus one. I concede the same amount that I do. My pass accuracy is 52. <laughs> my possession, while well, I was 33. I'm not a, a player for possession, but if we go on to my friendlies record, it's very similar by the looks of it in terms of goals scored and everything, which would indicate that I'm coming up against level opponents all the time. Like, the goals marginally more for the opponents, uh, like 20 odd more, well, 19 more goals for the opponents, but. It, it's almost 50 50 there and it's just it's horrible it really is just why why is everything so toxic why is it is it driven to be a, a competitive thing like they want this to be an esport and they they just kill the enjoyment everything like the reason this spark uh, the video is the, the friendly stuff i just cannot believe they've put limits on that I really can't because I fear for whatever they do next. Like, if they do another promo, which I'm sure they will on Friday, um, that's another problem, really. The promos have, have became so... I'll, I'll get on to that as well. This video will be really, really long, but it's just everything that I want to say about FIFA I'm going to say now because it, it just needs saying by more and more people. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I fear for whatever the next player um, player objective is because... Say you need 10 wins, they'll probably give you a max 20 games or 25 games, which means you'll have to grind it out on the games that you're narrowly losing. You're not going to want to back out. You're going to want to play it, which is going to create a toxic thing. You're going to hate the game even more. And then you, you're going to think, oh, I need my champs rewards for Thursday. You're going to go out and play that to try and get them. And champs rewards are just shit. They really are. Like They should be whatever the promo is should be in there alongside team of the week so it gives you a chance of getting something usable this is the best red that i've had and i've got gold two or gold three every single week so i've had uh, eight red cards now i'll show you them all actually so we've got ibrahimovic there uh if i go center club on mbappe and we put red cards here as the uh the uh there we go gold foot champions this is my rewards 285s that are un unusable because pace is terrible Delaney, probably the best card, but goes for about 40k on the market because he's pacey. Um, and yeah, the rest are just shit, unusable. It, it, nobody has these cards in their team unless they're doing objectives. And even then, they'll try and get the more meta players in whatever league it is. So yeah, that's what I've been rewarded with. Why do I even care? It's because the packs and everything else that you can get associated with it. And it's the fear of missing out. <sighs> but it's uh, it just really is it's it's horrible playing this game like i i enjoyed it really early on and i i enjoy some of the things they've done particularly with the objectives and stuff like that like you'll see i've i've grinded for these uh, i love the upgrade spcs even though they're a coin sink i just like the ability to be able to get something so the champions league one i got this verna i've done about 30 of them so i mean it, it wasn't worth it in the grand scheme of things uh, but yeah, it's just toxic. This entire game is, is just toxic and it's it's not good for your mental being really. And I mean, I, I've took a couple of days just to play Cold War with some mates, play some other things. And my God, I love that. I really do. And another problem is that there's no competitor for FIFA. Pez just isn't at it. It just isn't at the standard. FIFA, for all the hate and everything, it's the best football simulation game well it's not a simulation game uh, christ i can't even talk the best football game on the market no questions it, it just is and that's why it's got about 90 percent of the the market that people want uh sorry of people who want to play a football game uh 90 percent will be on fifa the other 10 percent will be on pairs or other competitors that just aren't aren't up to scratch now i'm trying to remember what else i was um 
going to talk about and for the life of me I cannot remember and that's really annoying me I had a list of stuff and I've talked about most of it but yeah oh there's this another thing actually there I don't think it's on here yet but I know with PC you can put limits which is brilliant because I myself have been guilty of it back in the day while I was at uni I had a lot of disposable income and I would just load up 12k FIFA points for a new promo then get nothing load up another 12k and I was addicted and it's horrible and it shouldn't be there with the pack limits and the point limits you can put limits on it's brilliant you know it, you can put 2,000 FIFA point limit per week and that kind of thing. What isn't so good is that you can put a one hour um, stopgap. So basically it pops up. I wish I could show you on screen here, but the update isn't there to my knowledge. I don't think so anyway, unless wait, it might be on um, more options. Here we go. Please be on here. Uh, Playtime. Yes, there we go. Here we go with the limits. This is it. Okay, so you can limit how much you play, all that kind of crap, which is brilliant, you would think. Um, wait, what? Using... What? Understand and take weekly limits roll over on Sunday night. Shit, using is currently disabled to track. Okay, well, I, I can't access it. But the annoying thing is, is that you can put a... So you, you put your limit on if you, you've got a limit of 20 packs a week. You reach that limit... And it'll come up and it'll say, do you want to postpone this for one hour? If someone's addicted to that kind of thing, it's like gambling. If you're addicted to it, you're going to think, oh, it's just an hour. So I'll, I'll disable that. Oh, shit, I've spent another 12K, another 24K. And it's absolutely absurd that they can get away with that. What's the point in having limits if you can just bypass the limits for an hour? And then, you know, the limit goes back on. But then next time, guess when the limit comes off? You get another out. It's just... They're, they're completely driven by money. And it's uh, it's just horrendous. That was another thing I was going to talk about, is the promos. The promos have got steadily worse in terms of what's available. Last year and the year before, you could get 23 items or 24 items in one team um promo now they're split it into two which i don't have a problem with but look at what's available now if it's actually going to show there we go so you've got how many cards is that six eleven eleven cards and that's you uh, that's europa league and champions league cards into one and that's eleven impacts whereas all promos in other fifas you would have 23 or 24 items however many it was um, and some would even have two week promos there as well. So you'd have 23 and then another 23, but now they've split it into two. So you get 11, which guess what? Minimalizes extremely the likelihood of you packing one of these cards because it's just less available. So if we go to pack probabilities on a standard gold pack, under 1%, you go to a 40, uh, 25K pack, it's still under 1%, which is a joke. Uh, the, the promos... I was a big fan of the two-week thing because there's always something in packs. But even this, it expires before the next promo. So, well, it says two days, six hours. So this one actually runs until Friday, which is fair enough. But the other promos have expired just before Thursday. And guess what you get on Thursday morning? Rewards. So most people open them. There's no promos in packs. And then Friday comes, there's a new promo in pack. Oh, look. Oh, I'll load up some FIFA points because I have no no packs. It's, it's all driven for you to spend money on the game and it's it's just horrible this game has just become so toxic in every single area and whenever there's something enjoyable or something that people want to do um or enjoy EA find a way to crucify it and make it toxic and make it just win based and horrible and oh just why why i can't believe they've touched friendlies i i really can't with the way that they've they've uh structured that entire thing <sighs> just why everything that's enjoyable they find a way to make it horrible and yeah I, again with skill-based matchmaking i had to um relegate myself because it was taking me double triple the amount of games that it should have for me to get those objective players. And that's what I enjoyed. I wanted to be in a relaxing game mode. So I relegated two divisions. And yeah, you shouldn't be doing that. And I shouldn't have to do that either. But more people will do that. So then the people in Division 4 will have to relegate to Division 6 to get easier games. And 
it just creates a system and it's going to happen even more now because you've got a limited amount of games so more people are going to think i don't want to be playing people around my skill rating where it's a 50 50 so i'll go and relegate and then i'll get easy objectives but then by doing that people have to relegate even further and it's oh and people are relegating in the first place as well because the reward system is so broke for uh, division rivals division four for game time spent has the best rewards available in my opinion so if we look onto this uh, rank one gives you um let's have a look so a tradable 50k pack 45k pack and 35k pack you take untradable rewards you get two of those of course it's the same with every division now i can't specifically remember what division three and two are because i have been in them and i've got those rewards but they are not as good as these packs purely because of the mega pack and the 50k pack which are some of the best packs in the game Division 1 is shit as well. Like, Division 1, rank 2, gives you two 55k packs. And I know that because I've had that reward. And it's the exact same as if you were playing squad battles to Elite 1. It used to be an ultimate pack, which would have been brilliant. You can get two uh, untradable ultimate packs. The only great rank in the top three divisions is Division 1, rank 1, which is fair enough. But it's so hard to get now because of the rivals uh, that you've got to play and then the champs and the points you've got to ascertain so it's it's a 125k pack and a 35k pack and yeah other than that I, I would argue value for money and the packs that you're getting division four rank one is the best option in the in the entire thing other than rank one uh, division one and it just shouldn't be like even rank two rank two in division four gives you a 50k pack a 30k pack and okay the jumbo gold pack's crap it's 24 items three rares but the 50k pack is big same with the rare electrums you can double that with untradeable rank three is obviously going to be shite uh, <laughs> well to be fair it's not a 35k pack and two 15s doubled four and two it's not even that bad just for rank three and that's in division four um the rewards ahead of this some of them have prime electrum some of them have that sort of thing um i can't for the life of me entirely remember but yeah for those who have had those rewards i think you'll agree that because of the 50k packs and the 35k packs that you can get in this division they are better than division two division three and even division one um i cannot remember what rank three is for division one but it's not amazing and even rank two for division one 255k packs considering you can just get that for squad battles <sighs> there's just so many things wrong with this and yeah i mean ea just gonna continually find ways to make it um game time based so you've got to be playing full games and you've got to be uh, doing this to get the things that you enjoy they're going to keep making things untradeable they're going to keep driving it down so you've got a limited quantity of uh, games in every single game mode they're going to make everything skill based matchmaking so you get level opponents they'll find a way to stop people relegating as well whether that's bans whether that's other things just to to make it as hard as possible for you and again it comes back to the very first point that i raised in this video fifa and any game is meant to be fun it is not meant to be a chore and at the minute it feels like a chore for me I don't know if I'm the only one. I, I can't imagine I am. But yeah, I mean, this video has went on for over half an hour now. So I'm just going to leave it there. There was a few other things I wanted to raise and I just can't remember for the life of me. So I apologize for that. But let me know what you think. Uh, if you agree with me, if there's any things you don't agree. Uh, if you find FIFA fun or if it's a chore, let me know. But yeah, I mean, I might do more videos of this kind of style uh, with more detailed information and uh, points and analysis to you know back up what I'm saying but yeah it's just a little talk I suppose so anyhow hopefully you have enjoyed subscribe if you haven't already like the video and yeah peace